This is just a follow-up uh, in regards to the case I put up uh, uh, in connection with the webinar um, last week. Uh, you saw I had put up a 68-year-old gentleman who uh, had a painful, stiff knee and uh, failed conservative management. So the things that are questions that I had put was in uh, planning. Planning is an extremely important step uh, in any uh, surgery that you do. And if you look at that particular case, you may think it's a straightforward virus. But if you were to draw a line along the shaft of the tibia and, and a line perpendicular to that where you're likely to do your tibial cut, you would notice that there is a defect in the posteromedial aspect of the knee and uh, that defect uh, uh, will be exposed uh, after your tibial cut. So unless you plan for it as to what you'd like to do to address that, um, it's going to be a problem. So in terms of planning, uh, you've got to think, how are you going to address that defect? So there are options. You could do bone graft, you could do an augment, uh, you could do screws and cement. So whatever you think um, is going to be uh, okay for that patient. So um, that's the thing. So once you decide on what you're going to do, you need to think about the the equipment you need to order. So unless you order uh, those uh, special uh, equipment that you need, like for example, if you're putting a augment, you would need a stem. Uh, and you need a special uh, set for that. Uh, so uh, planning is a key element uh, or a step in relation to that. And once you've identified from your planning and, you are, and you've got your equipment, then uh, exposure. So do you think you need anything different? Uh, I think a medial parallel patellar approach would be more than enough uh, for this kind of patient. Uh, whether you need to do more releases, it depends during the operation. Uh, because you had a fixed flexion uh, and, a, and a quite severe varus, you may need to do a lot of releases medially. Uh, just do your standard exposure, and then after you've done your bony cuts, uh, then during balancing, that's when you need to decide how much of uh, a release you need to do. So in my experience, once you've done the medial uh, exposure, uh, not uh, release, medial parapetal uh, approach and exposure, and you've done your bony cuts, and you've taken the posterior osteophytes and released the posterior capsule, you often correct the fixed flexion. So very rarely do you need to do more bony cuts. And remember, the more bony cuts you do, you're elevating the joint line, especially distal femur. And if you cut the uh, proximal tibia more, then you get a mismatch between the femur and the tibia. So just be very wary of how much bone you take off. I take off minimum bone and then I address the soft tissue. That is my principle. Um, so th that's the thing that uh, I would advise you to think. So in terms of this case, what I did was I almost a tibia first person. So I did the tibia first, so that gives me a lot of space to, to then uh, work on the femur. And I did the femoral uh, cut, uh, uh, cut and then I decided on how much uh, of the uh, proximal tibia do I need to cut more in terms of the medial side alone. Uh, whether I could deal with a bone graft or an augment. So I had the augment uh, already. So I, and I elected to take uh, extra five millimeters off on the medial side. And there was very little um, uh, then defect uh, visible. Uh, so then I went with that. And then I used a stem, a short stem for that. Uh, and if you look at the literature in terms of stems, you have the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good is the short cemented stems. They do extremely well. Uh, compared to the bad, which is the long cemented stems, and the worst of the uncemented stems. Uh, that's what literature has taught us. So after having done the tibia and the augment uh, uh, cut, um, then I have completed the, the femoral uh, component uh, cuts. And in this case, I, uh, I'm mostly a PS surgeon. And in, in this case, with Sumia, so much of where it's quite difficult to have a PCL present. Uh, and in this case, the PCL was, wasn't present, so you, uh, you automatically go for a cruciate sub, uh, sacrificing uh, or a, a substituting implant. And that's where I went in this. And it was easy to balance with very little releases on the medial side. And I'll post the post-op x-rays for you. Uh, I hope uh, this is a, um, a nice case for you to learn from. Thank you.